This is the ninth part of my exploration of Richard Gage's claims for 9-11 controlled demolition from his video Blueprint for Truth. So far we've looked at the physics of the collapse of the Twin Towers, and now we will shift to some claims which involve the chemistry of the collapse, the presence of iron microspheres, and the sulfidized steel in the debris. I got a lot of help from chemists, metallurgists, and others in understanding Richard Gage's claims in these matters. Near the beginning of a March 6, 2011 debate, Richard Gage said, I have to explain, quote, the billions of previously molten iron microspheres or the debate is over. Richard Gage asserts that iron microspheres can cre be created only at temperatures over 2,700 degrees, way more heat than an office fire. He sees this as evidence of very hot nanothermites destroying the structural supports of the Twin Towers. Let's look at this claim that only controlled demolition can explain these iron microspheres and see if it's true. The R.J. Lee study of dust in 2003, prepared for Deutsche Bank, reported billions of iron-rich spheres from the iron-bearing building components or contents. These are not pure iron spheres, by the way. The melting temperature of a sphere with iron and other metals mixed together is lower than pure iron. In addition, a piece of metal becomes like licorice at lower temperatures. Microspheres can be produced through a melting below the 2700 degree point, where the whole metal bar turns into a liquid. Gage asserts that there is a high concentration of these iron-rich spheres, which is true. In any fire, other materials are burned away, and the iron is not, so the residue will have higher concentrations of whatever didn't burn off. In our debate, Gage said about the microspheres, quote, if you had thousands of cutter charges throughout the columns and beams in the buildings under explosive conditions, that would be dispersed. Quote, That's a big if. Would these cutter charges be carved into the steel structures? Because if so, that would create the stench of burning metal and incredibly loud noises. If not, they would be less precise in doing their work. Either way, cutter charges leave behind several unmistakable telltale signatures, none of which are visible in any sample from ground zero such as steel fractures showing extremely high rate of strain detectable through crystallography deposits of copper by the cut surfaces, infusion of copper into the steel grain structure, steel shrapnel also with a unique strain signature detectable in the dust. Another problem with cutter charges is if you're trying to plant these charges covertly, you have to strip away the exterior cladding, fireproofing, plumbing. You can't just tuck your explosives away wherever they'd be least obvious. Your cutter charges will be big, bulky things, impossible to conceal. Thermitics would also leave tons of formerly melted iron blobs in the debris pile, not just microspheres. So if the iron-rich spheres had been created by controlled demolition, there would have been telltale signs in the steel girders that were never found. Another possible source of the spheres goes back to the 1970s, when workers welded thousands of steel beams and splattered microspheres everywhere. Vacuuming and sweeping up the mess could not possibly pick up all the molten microspheres that solidify upon contact with the cold steel and stick to the beams in, in corners where they can't be reached easily. Even if they were created on 9-11, the R.J. Lee study said, quote, considering the high temperatures reached during the destruction of the World Trade Center, iron-rich spheres would be expected to be present in the dust, close quote. Why would they say this if they did not know that iron-rich spheres could be created in a regular office fire? Another possible source of iron-rich microspheres has been proposed as fly ash in the concrete. At the time of our debate, I could not find proof of this assertion, but here it is. This is a photo and accompanying spectrum of an iron-rich microsphere in Tolk fly ash. I obtained it from a dust expert who has collected 400,000 dust samples from fly ash alone. This particle is an iron oxide of some type. The assumption that iron-rich spheres must come from fire temperatures capable of melting pure iron is invalid. The R.J. Lee report said, quote, the conflagration caused materials to form into spherical particles, such as metals like iron, zinc, and lead, and spherical silicates or fly ash. In part 10, we'll investigate the 9-11 mystery of sulfidized steel and how it got there.